Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the trust, most of all. Man, so much to talk about. You know, and how, how you talk after KT? I don't know how to do that. I have never been trained to talk after KT because that just blew whatever hair I had left. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, before we had hope, but now, damn, you, you killed every bit of hope over there. Somewhere. Man, that was, whoa. I gotta say, wow. And the reason I say that because he, he sometimes calls me, he says, Tony, you feel deep, right? You talk some stuff that's deep, but really? After that, and I was supposed to talk about some technical stuff, I don't wanna do that now. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. That, would, that would take everyone in a whole different direction, not, not in a good one. But, but I did promise I gotta talk about, so maybe, maybe most likely I'll stay for Bay Shop so we can have a little bit more talk about where this group of people are heading to. Because you guys talk about CEO and CEO is great, but what does that really mean? And maybe we'll get into the deeper sense of that man, and what it can do for the people inside this room. All right, can we do that? Yeah. All right, a little later. Okay. <laughs> By the time, MC, thank you. That was great. Don't worry about it because I also said my throat went, what, what really happened, my brain went numb and it just cleared. I don't know why, first time they put me on the MC, I was already an MD. First time I'm doing an MC. And the reason that Corinne put me on is she said, Tony, just show how it's supposed to be done. It's your marketing director. We'll usually train your associate to do that. You gotta show how it needs to be done. We are on a verge of creating TSM. This is a time where things are boiling. I'm running right 18 to 20 one-on-one a day between us, Edward, Elizabeth, right? At that time, Susie wasn't even anywhere near the business. But it's boiling, it's packing. It, it, we're in a, in a sense where we don't have enough room or space on the floor to do one-on-ones. And I had to learn the MC script, except I had no time to do that. <laughs> and I was supposed to show the right example how it needs to be done. If that wasn't the biggest disaster you have ever seen, I, what was. I got up over there, I said the first sentence, and then I went blank. And when I went blank, I, they told me, the minute you forget what you have to say, invite the trainer, invite the presenter. Okay? Presenter will take it away, they'll be okay. Invite the, pre edify the presenter, and go. Couldn't even do that. Forgot the presenter's name. <laughs> <laughs> so I got so nervous, I said, that dude, <laughs> if that wasn't bad, <laughs> I said, he has currently 2,000 offices nationwide. <laughs> Jack looking at me, it wasn't even Jack presenter, some other guy that is not even in the business anymore. He's like, 2,000 offices? <laughs> he got barely 20 people under him. What 2,000 offices, right? That was so horrible. And then we had this time where I had to be the first trainer for our classes. Some of you may have heard this story, so I practiced all night how to speak, how to do a class. And the class is to do a startup class for those that just start in a business. So for about three weeks, I shadowed Karine. Karine was in charge of that. I was videotaping her. I had one of those spy pens so she doesn't know that I'm videotaping it so I can mm -hmm. later practice what she said. So I practiced like three weeks straight, no sleep, no nothing. By the time you get, it's total of six slides, you get to the third slide, you're 40 minutes in, supposed to because there's so much content in those slides. Everybody walked in. I felt that I'm ready. The minute they walked in, my brain went clear. I don't know what to talk about. So I started to drag the time, right? I said, hey, everybody put your phones on stuff. Let me see you do that. Then I started to ask for everyone's names. And not that I remembered any of that after five seconds. <laughs> and then I remember by the time I got to the third slide, I am wet like somebody just poured a, a water on me like, three, four bottles full, right? <laughs> I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna pass out. This is happening. This is happening. It's so hot. I said, is anyone hot by any chance? And the thing is, inside that small room, it's like the size of that room, was 56 degrees. Because the AC was broken, we had to leave it out for 12 hours to cool down so 300 people can get in and not be super hot and 
get rid of. So inside the room is 56 degrees, I'm boiling. Mm -hmm. I went blank. Karine was sitting over there just in case for the first time. <laughs> she looked at she's like, what's going on? I said, everywhere, by the way, this is this is Karin. She is she is I'm about to paint, so I didn't know how to edify. I forgot her name for a sec, so I just did this. Respect. <laughs> 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 by the time I got to the third slide, I got the clicker and I didn't even invite her. I just threw the clicker to her and I ran out of the room. <laughs> when I got out with a couple of boys that actually saw me, they, they asked, I'm like, I'm I'm like blank white. I'm like, I've been bleached. I walk out, they saw my face, they knew I'm about to pass out. They held me, literally, from my two shoulders, they held me, took me to the bathroom with a suit inside, uh, uh, under the drain, just so, you know, cold water can run on me. It's like I took a shower with my suit on. So, that's, that was a bad Jack said, Tony, it's time for you to train, man. You've been in the business three weeks now, you have done like 15 field trainings. You gotta talk about it. I got up on the stage, I talked about every problem there is besides field training. <laughs> it was so bad, I, I don't know why I was angry at people, yelling at them, all kinds of things. The back two rows quit. They never came back. So when you hear somebody talking, you feel like, what is this guy talking about, right? It's so bad. Unless you're seeing people literally walking out permanently, believe me, they did okay. <laughs> for the first time ever, Jack had to come and high five and say, man, you did good. I saw him with his hand shaking when he wanted to high five. <laughs> I have never seen a man that worried that he was that day because half of his base shop quit after that training. <laughs> if you think that was horrible, that was a horror show like they haven't seen in Hollywood. Then again, we did that again in a week because he had faith. I said, Tony, you got to do it again, man. Another week, and another week, and another week. Still out of 57 people with five people left. And another week, and again, and again. It takes a lot to have faith like that, huh? I mean, really a lot. And some people, when they lose their first time, because of that, right? That love, literally because of that. But then again, something. I started to understand people and started to talk about what's coming, like it is, and that was amazing. Man, I took so many notes. Matter of fact, most of the time when people talk, I don't take notes until I hear something new. When I hear something new that speaks to my heart, I start taking notes. KP was talking, I took notes, notes, and chart. That was amazing. Thank you. And one of the things I noticed, did you notice? It was quoting from his heart. It wasn't mechanical yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. That's why it was so interesting to hear, right? Matter of fact, we talked about that basketball player that was looking at him with envy. You know what I see, KP? I see you as a CEO MVP and Donald from a size. It's really <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just took my MVP away from me. Right? <laughs> He'd be, he'd be like, he took my MVP away from me. Mm, it's going to be some real competition. Don't even say hi to me till I get my MVP. <laughs> but this group of people, we were even less than this and even half as engaged as you guys are. Because what I see, I don't see this. I see this with you guys. I see a fist. I see everybody talking same language, same energy, on the same page. We will talk about the power of that a little later. Today, I want it to be a little bit more informative of the financial industry. Any of you that work for yourself besides this business, what do you do? Sir? I am a distributor again. <laughs> Add another product. Amazing. Anybody else? Yes? Uh, DT Brewer out of Trade Current. Four exits. Okay. How's that going? Great. And out of 100 people, you know how many can do that? Um, uh, Not a lot. Uh, Would you say that's a duplicatable process? Sure. All right, we'll talk about that. Anybody else? Here. Yes? My restaurant. Your restaurant, right? She has all kinds of good food that helps you get fat faster, right? <laughs> I try, believe me, I know. I know. That's my same marketing. When people come to my office and I have to offer them chocolate, say, here we go, some chocolate helps you get fat faster. I swear, 
Nobody has ever eaten my chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not person so far, yeah. Yes, sir. DJ from Kale, you, we could tell he was a DJ because the way he does MC, that is just yeah, right? Yeah. Nobody's running away when he does MC, yeah. right? Yeah. Quite the opposite from other rooms, neighbors come, like, what's going on over here? They're trying to blend in, right? <laughs> All right, who else? Yes. Administrator of a board and care facility. Wow, okay, nice. Is that your facility? It is. Okay, very nice, very nice. Let's talk about some fun stuff. Can we do that? Yep. Yeah. All right. All right, advanced money. The reason I talk about advanced money because I don't do this training very often. I do it once in a while. But it's different when you know something and it's completely different ballgame when you're trying to see something else is wrong, right? Because the duplication process, if it's not simple enough, then people lock up. They turn off, right? Within 30 seconds of your conversation, they will shut down and they'll be polite enough for you to talk. And at the end, they say, Thank you for great information. Shake your hand and can't wait for you to get out of the damn room. All right, that happened to me many, many, many times till I learned to give value to everything I talk about. All right, because you can give things away, but unless you give value, who will? All right, okay. What I also want to talk about, what happens when you come across people that are quite successful in the financial field, right? such as traders. I have these clients, for example, quite a few clients like this, but this particular couple, they have two small kids when I saw them first. Now each kid is seven and nine. They work biannually. There is about 30 of them as traders just like them. They get together once a year, month of January, right? January 4th hits. They get in a room, two people that are uh, Series 7 license, they open a, something like a corporation, they just trade. These 30 people trade for an entire year until Thanksgiving Day. Make sense? All right. So everyone starts with how much they have, 50,000, 7,500, whatever they have, they start with that. But their average rate of return per year, net rate of return, is between 650 to 700%. Net. So these are hardcore trade. They're very analytical, very analytical. Their mind works a bit different than I would say mine does or anyone that I know, right? And, and all they do is they read money politics eight to 10 hours a day. That's their life, they love it, they enjoy it, they work one year, they take the spoils of it, enjoy another year not working, the next year they get together against our trading. <laughs> Make sense? So how do you make these guys, when they're talking about six, 700% rate of return, you make him your ideal client by the way they are yeah. many, nice. many years ago. Okay, so we can talk about that. All right, this is Soviet Union days in, in terms of cup sizes. Uh, don't be, hey, hey, sit down. It's not what I meant. Sit down. This is more important. And then sometimes you come across people where you're not equipped with anything, but you want to talk about market timing and you want to take their focus away from money products, insurance, and all that. You just want them to focus on what's important, which is in our business, we always talk about three things, right? Jack always draws these four circles, right? Why we're doing this. So it can be simple enough for anyone to see and say, I can do this. Well, that's done, done proof. I can do that, that's so easy. But the minute you throw up your entire knowledge on people, and not the simplicity, but whatever you learn, because your excitement is talking, your passion is talking, so you just give, pour, pour, you just wow on these people. The weight of the knowledge crushes them. And they're like, no, 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 that's not even my field. I'm completely from a different industry. They start comparing industries now. When they start comparing industries, the fear gets in, and fear is very fast to grow. Never do that. Make sense? If somebody wanted to play in the NBA, right, and they didn't even go to a first basketball class, and you start telling them what that path looked like and challenges they would have, do you think they will actually ever start? Mm -mm. 
but if you could just sell them the dream, the destination, what it looks like, the lifestyle, now they'll say, oh, so this is the quickest way that could get me there? In my case and scenario, when do we start? Mm -hmm. I'm excited to start, right? Mm -hmm. Shift their vision, whether is it, if you just talk about the lifestyle, then they will choose the industry and the vehicles that would get them, and then you can draw your circles where you mm -hmm. talk about what's the current need in any business, it's supply and demand, yes? Mm -hmm. Any business. Illegal to legal. Everywhere is the same thing. When it's business, it's supply and demand. So what's the current need? What's the current biggest need? Would you say most people would like to learn more about how money works? Yeah. Would you say the very first hundred people you know would like to have a little bit more income or a little bit more savings? Yes. Absolutely. So would you say there is a huge need for that today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second circle is what? Who we are. You start talking about Aegon, Transmaker, WFJ, what we do, you know, combined together. And third thing is, and third thing is, what is that gonna, how we try to do that? Meaning, yes, the solution. Talk about the seminar business, the product, and all that. Okay? But you draw four circles. So do you know anyone who wants the product, who wants the business, who wants the income, or wants the agencies and the distribution system? Now they see that four circles, Oh, that was simple. I can do that. They don't compare industries anymore. But if I start talking about what I'm going to talk about from the first time I met the person, they will run away from you like, like there's no tomorrow. Like there's a lion chasing them. <laughs> All right? But here's some quick ways of prospecting when you're sitting in a circle of people. It's a per se. Christmas get together, Thanksgiving get a birthday get together. When it's time when you eat the food, you're just chilling. Just kick back, relax, and having fun. Here's some ways you can get it. I always say, I went to this client that I was talking about. I said, by any chance, do you have a laptop at home? Would you say most people have plenty of laptops at home? Yes? Yeah. They probably have about six, seven on the side that is not working or doesn't look cool enough anymore. They just throw it aside, right? <laughs> All right. So we go to Yahoo Finance. And is how mine works differently from an investor standpoint, an average Joe standpoint, a business owner standpoint, and somebody who wants to make something great. Choose the maps. Full screen. Can you guys see this? Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's see for a trader standpoint. Donald, what do you see here? That's what it is. You're absolutely right. There's no wrong answer in here. Definitely see it. Okay. See it? Okay. An upstream. You see an upstream over there? A downstream, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, w. Okay. Okay. It's your business. So what do you see? And you're a business owner in healthcare. Yeah. The stock, stock is essentially it's going up and then it's going, it's diving. Right? The recession. So weird. And then it's just the entire thing is weird. Right? Look at somebody's cardiogram, huh? You see a lot of those, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that too. Somebody's heart it's performance. Easy. What happened? Did you get excited? Did you, did, it, did you take some Xanax over there? Yep. Relaxing, right? What happened? Nothing doing, right? All right. Who else? There is no consistent growth. There's no consistent growth, right? Absolutely. It's just too many up and downs. Word by tell over here, realize the entire United States economy. Over here, realize the past and the future. Can I show you that? Yep. Yeah. This in this line. It's so weird, man. What is that? A lot of times we talk about, let me zoom this in a little bit more. Is that better? Zoom, zoom in. All right. A lot of times we talk about baby boomer market, right? And the changes it has made. Yes? Mm -hmm. You see on the bottom where it says the years? Shows the years? Mm -hmm. Okay. When I go with the scroller, on the bottom of that scroller, it's going to show the year and date. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 1946. Let's go back a little bit. 
Soldiers came on site to boom bunch of babies. Yes, start the baby boomer market. Yeah. All right, natural habits of people. What can you do, right? Around that time, you guys heard that some changes have, have been made to the industry of, as far as what Gerber has done. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they went from a, from a small company that distributes 300,000 jars of milk powder, which had no vitamins, no nothing. I don't know if you had it. I, I remember I had it even in my country, right? It just milk powder, dry, you pour some hot water on it, stir it up, got yourself a milk, right? They would send a yellow can, you know, yellow cans, I remember. But basically they would distribute 300,000 jars of this every year. Mm -hmm. The right market hits, they went from 300,000 jars a year of distribution, because you're in the distribution business, to six million a month of distribution. They went not only nationwide, but worldwide. At this time, keep in mind the actual idea of we have a paycheck, and after 30 years we'll have our 401k, we'll have social security, the three-legged stool was working, where people on the side would invest in some mutual funds, and they would have, if you notice over here, they have some stable growth, right? Relatively, would you say they're stable? Yes? A little up and down, but relatively stable. So it's like this, okay. So the three-legged stool was working back then. All major economical changes happen in the month of January or between July to September. All right, this has a lot to do with politics. A lot to do with politics. This top 1% of the nation are also involved in politics. So let's move on forward. 1950s passed the car industry, passed right with the most prestigious business. Actually, career was a car salesman. Why? Because 76 million babies need to drive a car to go to university or college, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you wanted to, today every car salesman, when they work for a dealership, they sell about, what, four to five cars in a month? Hopefully, back then, imagine averaging seven to 10 a week. Why? Because they didn't have 15 dealerships in one city. It's not even 15, it's a lot more, huh? more like 50. They had one dealership for every four cities, but there's a huge demand. So after high school, everybody and their mamas would just drop on a suit, drive down to a dealership, because you didn't need a special license for that. That industry passed, if you notice over here, up and down, up and down, this is where car industry goes down all the way to here, 1954. Then after, goes forward a little bit, excuse me. I'm sorry, 1960s, over here. This was their only drug in the car industry, 1955. Then after, they are starting the process of going to college. Uh, I mean, after college, as far as buying a house and all that. This little bump over here, a little bit more accurate for you guys. Do you see this race? This was car industry. From here to here. Do you see this? Okay. That's your car industry. Car industry goes away. Now these 76 million babies need to buy a house. What industry comes back? Real estate. Real estate. Real estate. Thank you. And at, at that time, real estate again was pretty high. Six to eight sales a week per real estate agent. In today's money, that's way over seven figures. Why? 76 million babies want a house. That's the stand, that's the system of America, right? Okay. So over here is the path so far we're talking about. I'm getting to it. You don't have to ever go this far back. I'm gonna come back. 1985, that industry drops. Where's 1985? Here we go. 1985. Every time there is a market change, you guys getting this? Every time there is a market change, Donald, economy must drop. The chart has to go down before it picks up. It's like when the thrust of the rocket, when the rocket is taken out, they don't just put it on D and drive, right? <laughs> right, it, it has to fire up. The bigger the volume of the industry, mm -hmm. the bigger
bigger the volume, the deeper the dive, people. Always. Okay? So if it's kind of a tiny industry comparable, money-wise and volume-wise, it won't be a big dive before it. And of course, the media will label it in every way possible. Weak session, depression, all kinds of issues, right? <laughs> you saw those issues, don't worry about it. That's just media talk. It's supposed to. Why? Because chaos creates problems. It's not for the people. All right. This is, this is some advanced money stuff I'm talking about, okay? This is something that I would train in advanced fast start when I have one or two classes that I gotta do two hours back to back. So we're gonna do this in a couple of minutes, okay? Okay, what happens over here? Let's go down. Technical difficulties. Anybody knows that Tony got cloned? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it would go better? Mm -hmm. Much better. Okay. Okay, let's see what our dive is. Because we're coming close to that camera. Between 85, 85, 85 went up. Here we go. September. Do you see that date? September. The drop starts. The drop starts all the way to 1995. And as of January 1995, that's America's See that date on the bottom? January. And it goes high up. Like I said, conversion between eras, if it's not too big of an era, dive isn't too bad. It's still pretty stable. People still put their $50 in their mutual fund, wait 30 years, my social security will take care of me when I get there. Make sense? It was working. It was working until this happened. 1995 kicked in. 95 to year 2000, the not come here again. You see this high up point going, 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 going all the way to we're here 2000. Ran away again. It goes pretty high over there, huh? Yeah. Okay. And then there's a drop that starts when? Major drop happens in 2003. See this from here? Why 2003? 2003, another era came back. The real estate era. Now this is more relatable because most of you remember. In 2003, everybody was talking about, man, you gotta get into real estate, you gotta get into general construction, right? If you're a plumber, electrician, everybody wanted to do that. Why? Because for four years of time, the window of opportunity for real estate reopened. And then they called it the bubble before 2008, right? I was working at that time with the headquarters of the, of, of the bank. That's where I created their short sale process. $3.6 billion portfolio. They didn't have short sale. On a paper, they had it as a department. It was non-existent. So there was nothing being done. Losses piled up. The bank was losing both money and houses back to back. Big mess, right? That's what happens when you work for somebody else, though. Be grateful that you got it. You know what's down in Clinton Center over there? And they make sure they remind you every day, right? Don't get me wrong, money was good. Six figures for a youngster. Hey, hey. No wife, no kid at a time. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that was missing was there was no lifestyle. My health was going in the opposite direction because because of the stress levels. 14 to 16 hour shifts every day for six days a week. Not fun. Talk to a lot of high people, that noses are so high it's poking the ceiling. You can't even say hi properly. And then I get in this business, an executive vice chairman who has over 700 SMDs under him, six, seven CEOs and EVCs, takes us 
States, Ida and I, two years of stay, where him and his wife are cooking for us while he's coaching us the business over the table. And I remember the president of Chisa for doing that for me. <laughs> We're not saying hi properly. Anyways. But you look at this, 2003, 2007, this is the increase you're looking at right now. See, small drop. Would you say it's a smaller drop? Mm -hmm. Depends where you stand, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, are you shorting it or you're going long? <laughs> That's the trading language. One day we'll talk about that. But you don't focus on that. 2003, 2007, increase happened. And I'm going to show you numbers what this looks like because if you have the pictures, this will register in about five minutes from now. If I say Mr. and Mrs. Client, or I would say, hey, bud, matter of fact, what you're looking at is just the next timing is coming in. Now I didn't come here to preach or bore you, but the reason I'm talking about what happened before so you understand what's coming next and we can have a bigger piece of the pie. And I'll show you what kind of money we're talking about. All right? So when I started to talk that language with my friends, everyone that was negative, right, that would really make the worm come out in me like I was talking to you, right, we'll talk about that later. Meaning if they would pull me down, hey man, your parents were never millionaires, what makes you think you're gonna succeed at this thing, right? I mean, I get it, you work at a bank, but they don't let you know as much as your paycheck allows you, right? Come on now, what do you have to do with this business, right? All this, I said, man, great points, matter of fact, I know you care about me, that's why you say that. You might tell that to my trainer as a favor to me because the more you tell him, the more I listen and learn. Just tell him everything negative you think this is. <laughs> Do that for me, can you? I'm, you tell me because you care, right? For 30 minutes, I've been listening to all kinds of negative and non-supportive stuff, and I know you're coming from a good place, but I know you're coming from a good place. Only, you only say it because you care. If you don't care, you want to say you would just leave, right? I want you to say it in front of my trainer so I can listen and learn. This is a big part of my life. I will appreciate that. What day is better for you? All of a sudden, the negative guy, his whole family is sitting over there, and I'm taking my training. I just turned that negative guy into a good training. <laughs> if I would have sit and wait when they make a decision to support me, I don't know if today I'll be standing on a stage or even anywhere around these premises. All right, is that good? Okay, so this may be may look confusing, but it's coming. It's coming. I'm on something here, okay? I'm on something. I'm not going to start my sermon yet, but I'm on something. All right, you, you don't know when I start the sermon, believe me. I have all kinds of invitations already. Speak to the Islamic crowd, speak to the Christian crowd. Two days ago, I missed my congregation prospect with a preacher. He saw the He's a Christian preacher. We talked about Christian, and then he saw the Holy Quran in my other hand, so he ran away. And <laughs> but these things happen only to me. When Ida is next to me, she's like, oh boy, you, you gotta stop doing these things to me, right? You gotta have fun. Ida says, I'm, I'm too much of a goof, so I gotta be a little bit more serious during my trainings. She says, if you're more serious, people will hear more serious. You get up over there, you do stand-up comedy, they forget about your training. <laughs> I'm like, but the thing is, all the analogies are from actually our life. Like, what part of me, the baby, and Alex coming to you like a SWAT team with dart guns was a joke? It was a reality. It was funny for us, sad for you, but you know. All right. What I'm about to show you, the biggest dive happened over here, 2009. You see that? That's where that bubble burst they were talking about. You guys want to know what actually happened to the industry? Why that bubble burst? You guys want to know the insights? Yeah. Okay. So the government said, we want to come up with restructure loans. So an average Joe that can that makes annually only 45000 or less can still own a home. Mm -hmm. However, they have to go through an income verification. Mm -hmm. Now, because most real estate agents and escrow closers and loan officers are working in between together as well as a network. Everyone shares their commission with each other under the table. Mm -hmm. The whole income verification part was forgot. When I was creating the short sale process, I have literally come across loans that were registered on a parent. 
on a dog. No social security was improved and the loan was originated. And here's what was happening. People are not dumb. People are smart. When they see money, they can smell it. Yes? Legally or illegally. So what they did, one goes, buys a house. I have 5000 to put as a down payment, and I'm going to buy a house. I, can make, I make only 45000 a year. Gets a house. Not for himself. Registers it. As a, as a residency, but puts in a renter. Why they register it as a residency? Because interest is lower, taxes are lower. If it's investment property, taxes are higher, interest is higher. Make sense? Renters get in, six months he pays on that loan. Six months later calls the bank, says, I can no longer make payments. I have, I'm being laid off. I have something called imminent default. Get this picture, get this story. And there are thousands like this. While the house is being pending for foreclosure, because what happens when there's no payments made on a mortgage, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That foreclosure process takes three months. So three months they don't pay, fourth month foreclosure process starts, that's seven months total before house work, the mortgage company forecloses on the house. They send a letter which they go to the bank and it costs them $25 to chart, saying I'm starting a bankruptcy chapter 7 or 13. The minute that there, there is a case number for bankruptcy, doesn't even have to, you don't even have to be actually involved in a bankruptcy. As long as the court opens a case, mm -hmm. you don't even have to go through with it. The bank is obligated to put a hold on every collection of premium for six months. Wow. Six months, seven months, that's 13 months, they're still collecting payment from the renters. Wow. Yet the bank has obligation to its shareholders to report profits so their stock prices don't go down they don't lose trust with their board investors is this too much to understand no, no. I'm trying to break it down really and this happens year after year after year after year and a couple of traders saw the bubble understood because they looked at the numbers they looked at something that nobody ever reads SEC recordings not the media because every CEO of those banks that was on Wall Street lined up wanting to borrow money was standing over there saying, on the media before before the bubble burst, saying, we're doing great. We fire another 3,000 people because we're not gonna pay payroll on 3,000 people. We can report that as profits. So we can hold on to our investors and shareholders. Mm -hmm. On and on and on, but how long can they hold out until there's no money left? Now what happens? They lost the house, they're losing the debt. The strongest bank is not the bank that owns the most assets. The strongest bank is the bank that controls the most debt. Why? Because as, as long as you're a citizen of the United States, your debt is insured by the government towards the financial institution. Portion of it. That's called recovery money. So be nice, but it's also a safety belt for them. That's why they, they're a, uh, Every three months, you know, they pay taxes, or every six months, it's quite an amount of the tax. When Washington Mutual was merging with Chase, their taxing amount was $50 billion as a tax on the business conducted. But they had only $40 billion left in the back account because somehow $33 trillion disappeared. <laughs> and then Chase comes in smooth, says, oh, I got $10 billion I can give you, and I'll take over your bank. Of course, that process started two years ago. I was one of the 60 people that we did the merger of the two companies. But uh, you guys understand this? It's a big game. And an average Joe always comes out the wrong side of it. Okay? And nobody talks about this thing. I went to start the business club. And my business professor was talking about how to pass a job interview. My finance professor with double masters in finance never had anything more than a CD account. And then one day she was talking about an exercise in a book we had to calculate the growth. She said, 11% in a rate of return in an IRA? <laughs> These things don't even exist anymore. And you're an 18, 19 year old sitting over there with a big dream of who you want to become. Somebody gets up there and says, These things don't even exist anymore. Now imagine how many 18, 19 year olds went under the hand of this professor. What we do here is true power because we really bring 
the right kind of education from that actually what's happening in Wall Street with all these big fancy schmancy companies that are not designed for male income families. It's the only company that brings it as education to everyone there is. Rich, poor, broke, drug addict, don't matter. We teach them all. We give it, they decide what to do with it. Join the crusade, make big things happen together, or enjoy our product, or do nothing. Who you know that's a good self? Who you know that is a good teacher? Who you know that has leadership skills? Make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Tell I that was serious, huh? <laughs> 2011 comes after this drop. You see this 2009. Look on the bottom day, 2009. I'm going to slide it forward. Do you see this? Still down, still down, 2011. All the way to. There you go, the final drop. January 31st. January is when market shifts up, always. Because every January, the president gets up on the TV talks about what we're doing for the entire year. The leader comes out, sells the tree to the destinies. Right? Big lie. All right. Do you see this up high north going? That was a huge dive before, and that dive took three years till it took off. Right? Three years till it took up. Why three years? Because it was the biggest dive in the entire history. I just showed you the entire history of the United States. This is S&P 500, Fortune 500 companies. They're running America's economy. That's their entire performance. And that big sky high thing is because we're in that timing now. We're in that timing now. I'm gonna flip to my presentation so you guys can understand this a little bit deeper. How about this? Camera, three lines. You have a napkin with your friends. Say, hey, were you around that around 95? Were you in were you in the internet? Were you in web design, coding, software engineering, computer repair shops that all of a sudden appeared on every corner? Right? Before that, they non-existent. What's a computer? Well, it's a box. You slap it, it works. <laughs> there was a computer before that. 2003, 2007, real estate comes in. In those four years of the right timing, they paid 47 billion in commission to the people. They went to real estate brokers, uh, plumbers, roofers, anybody and everybody that had to do anything with houses, with the industry. But that was only for four years. What if you have a 30 years of a window in four years, that's 47 billion. What does 30 years in the right timing look like? Mm -hmm. With the right system, easy to pitch system, easy proof. Matter of fact, even technology helps us. If you have an index finger, it works. Because before we had to use all kinds of pens and colors and everything on a paper, write business on a paper, recruit somebody on a paper. It was annoying. I had to go every day to post office, run around the office. Anybody have any policies to mail? <laughs> Right, we would scream it out all, every day. And I remember they would charge us $8.50 at the post office for that envelope to be mailed first class. And inside, if, the, if it wasn't a 1035 exchange, which means 1035 exchange would be 12 additional pages, okay? If it's just regular submission, then five policies could fit in. It's really squeezy. And we have to attach official checks with it. And then wait email for a response. Mm. If something is missing. Now, submit a policy with this, submit a recruit with this, run the entire office with this. Everything is, if you got a, you know, you don't even got a tie, it works. <laughs> it will work. As long as you got an index finger that's working, it'll work. And you can't pour your dollars on people. It has to be easy to pitch. Four circles like Jack says, right? That's what we came over with. This is what next 30 years look like. 2011, because it's not just baby boomers. You have us right behind it and our generations, which is even bigger than the baby boomers. We were more excited. 
I guess. So we pop more babies than the baby boomer generation. I know that works. All right. Forty-three trillion dollar industry. Forty-three trillion dollars was saved, was saved for these people who believe that thirty years working for a company works. Forty-three trillion dollars in two thousand eleven was reported in people's four hundred one k's that we do the rollovers. You know why I say we? Because everyone else can go to our site to sell whatever product their company has, not whatever product is the need. No, no, no. But they gotta eat too. So they sell whatever they have. It could be the best product they have, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best need for them. You see the difference? So far good? Mm -hmm. This was the warm up. <laughs> now I can show you how to present what products look like to someone that would say, I get this. Now where do you see yourself? And they'll point it out so they make choices what they will do. Educate you, let them build their own product for themselves. Can we do that? Yes. yes. Mr. and Ms. Fan or Mr. and Ms. Prospect, what I'm about to show you is five years of finance degree in college. The only difference is I will not be passing you a master's degree and you will not owe me 200 grand. Is that okay? What I'm about to show you next 20 minutes is what people learn five, six years and still don't understand. But I'm going to make sure before I walk out, you know it up and down, inside out, and you're going to smile just a little wider, if that's okay with you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Except when I say it, they actually believe it, because now I'm talking to their heart. Okay. What am I doing, though? For about 10 minutes, I promote what I'm about to show. This is when they go from kickback. Now, okay, I want to know. Shut down the TV, duct tape the kids, you know, all that. I don't hear any of that. I won't listen to this. Most people today, I say, go to the bank because that's what they were told, right? Banks are safe, yes? An average person doesn't understand what FDIC is and why banks are safe. So I ask him, why do you think banks are safe? FDIC, they're like, yeah, yeah, the man we walk in, it always shows everywhere. It's my good side, by the way, get it good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I say, yeah. I'm like, okay, what does FDIC stand for? They call federal, blah, 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 and that's it, right? I say, well, it stands for Federal Depository Insurance Corporations, which means it is the insurance corporations. <laughs> in other words, when you and I go to the public bank, Shows that's a guarantee. The eight, ten, twelve percent that's not guaranteed. So 
hopefully can be more. Now, worst case scenario, you'll end up halfway. But the one percent was guaranteed. Now you want the guarantee? If they were talking, they would say, "Do you want the guarantee loss for possible growth?" But they don't talk that way because marketing tends to kick in, right? All right. So fixed. In fixed, it gives you the guarantees, the safety, the never loss part. Okay. Next one was variable. Now there are people who want all of the loss. I mean, all of the growth, right? But also, when you have all of the growth, it comes with the risk. Around 1995, they said, well, people can no longer afford to go one step forward and two steps back. So variable doesn't work for most people, especially after that time variable was went down. A lot of people who had variable products were like, woo, I don't know if I like this. Okay? And then people who had fixed products said, well, 30 years passed. I don't know how much is happening. What am I going to do with this money? This money worked exactly what it was 30 years ago. They gave me some tip on the top. That's about it. So that no longer cuts it. So they came up with the index part where it will give the good side of both. Now you guys knew this, but this is how you explain a new name of your business. Mm -hmm. Okay? The index part will give you the guarantees and the safety of the first one and moderately higher growth like the variable provides, eliminating the risk. Good or good? Okay, three kinds of products that exist in this market, and this is what I call the master degree by six years people study this, still can't get it. All right, this will blow your mind away. Once you understand this, you will never need to listen what a salesman is telling you. You can do it yourself. Make sense? Matter of fact, you can help a whole bunch of people to understand and do it too, and all these fancy companies will pay you now for doing that. Not the people, but the companies. Is that okay? As I talk, I always do. <laughs> Seems like I'm doing a sales presentation. Am I? I educate them on points, but I show them you can know this stuff too. I didn't learn it overnight. You know it too. But this is for you when you're talking to someone who won't know. See, my traders had no idea that these things exist. I said, I knew this stuff, but I never understood how it worked. But they're really good at trading, right? But they don't know this product. So don't be afraid to share with drugs where they stand in their success life. Taxable products, those are the ones. There are three kinds of products where you can understand what the 6,000 companies said, right? First one is taxable product, which means we'll tax you today. In America, whatever is profit or income is taxable. How's the energy in the room? We doing good? Yeah. 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 Okay. You think? Comes handy? He's yeah. jumping up and down. <laughs> when in a lead you learn how to go from recruit to recruit to recruit to build, this will blow your mind away. All right? But you can't do it alone. You've got to leverage her. That's how CEOs happen. That's why when she talks to you guys, she leverages Jeff. She leads, but she leverages Jeff. That's what leadership is. Leadership is the type of thing you will ever find. It's not easy to be a leader. Oh, God, it's not easy. You know why? Because your people's failures are on your shoulders. When they're hungry, that's on you. When they win, that's also on you. That's not a, that's not a good position, but it's also, that's why it's a great position to be in. All right? And don't listen to people who say, I'm a leader. They're not the ones who are supposed to say, you're supposed to say, I'm going to follow them. That's, that's really a big thing to do. All right, let's get back to the CD accounts, right? They have DVD accounts. Kidding. <laughs> Seven accumulation accounts, all right? Stocks, bonds, mutual funds. All right, Mr. Trader, what's the stock? What's the stock? What's the stock? Uh, the company, uh, dividend pays you, right? Nope. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a partial ownership of a company. Say it again. It's a partial ownership of a company. Thank you. It's a partial ownership of a company. All right. So when the company wants to give out some ownership, right, 
they give out some shares. Yes? Yeah. Okay, why? They need more money. More investors, yes? They want more. <laughs> Increases value. Thank you. This is not for the money. Exactly. What are bonds? Let's see if he knows, and then you'll, you'll tell about this. Donald, what are bonds? Like me. We get a humble Taylor, what is it? We get a humble <laughs> Taylor, what is it? Uh, a bond, in my knowledge, is, is uh, what is it? Let me say it. Uh, it's like a you give the government money and they just they give oh, it back. Yes, sir. It's a sort of temporary reverse loan from the people to the government investing in Again, government has nothing to do with it, but you're close. So reverse okay. loan, exactly. Mm, yeah. Any time, any major corporation, including governments. When they want to raise cash money fast, they give out bonds. It's the debt of the company. All right? Mm. So anytime, now when you're trading, anytime you see any company that is really in need of some cash, they're giving out, and they're about to start. They have an SEC date that they have to really bond if you want to buy that, especially if you're a grasshopper kind of a trader. Mm -hmm. When you get 5% here, you get out of that, go 10% over there. Just for a couple of things, he started with 100 bucks, and then all I know, he's done bonus saving, saving. You know, oh, what are you doing, right? He's like, man, I got this, right? <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't record it. He's around. Okay. Stocks, bonds. Okay, mutual funds. Anybody who's a cook over here? Anybody who can make some mean? Yes, what do you cook? Anything. Anything, you'll cook anything, right? Whatever With you need. or without meat? I usually do meat, though. Cook more, no, if you're a vegan. I'm not a vegan. More. I could go with meat. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. H has anyone ever cooked a good soup? Yes, full, full of ingredients, yeah. right? And you take a nice scoop out, you have all kinds of ingredients in it, right? You have potatoes, veggies, <laughs> juice, right? All of that, right? And love a nice soup, right? All right. Here's the thing. Mutual fund is a soup. Mutual fund is a combination of different companies, or even one companies, but different kind of stocks. Could be fast growing, secure stocks, aggressive stocks. Aggressive means they're trading, they're being traded more often. Okay, that's why there is an increased risk. Moderate stocks have lesser value. They're being traded a little bit less, so they're moderate. Right, same thing in 401 case. When you're opening your 401 k with a company, they say, what do you want your money? You want it in secure place, that's money market accounts usually, right? Give you one or 1.3% growth annually, but it's secure. Do you want it in average or do you want it in risk, right? In every program, they give you those three choices. Life issues, do you want it secure? Do you want it moderate or do you want it aggressive? Fixed index variable. Same language everywhere. Uh, paper must be hot. On a piece of paper. This overall take 10 minutes to finish. You just have to explain this for paper this long. All right? Bottom line, how it works. You got $1,000, you want to go to the nearest bank, yes? Because why? Banks are safe. And bank takes one look at KP and says, man, that's the kindest person I've ever seen. Who cares what I give everyone else? KP, I'm going to give 4%. Sounds good. Then it's going to zero eight. That's funny. Before they wouldn't talk to me. Now I go to the same bank, all of a sudden the guy comes up, hey, tell me, man, we have a special on our CDs. You should jump in. Okay. What's the special? He goes, 0.8% and for 18 months long. I'm like, that's your special. He goes, yeah. I said, what's a regular? Is it negative five? <laughs> special at 0.8%. All right, so thousand dollars, and they'll give you four percent. What's four percent of thousand? Forty dollars, right? Which means at the end of the year, down you have forty dollars for KP. I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, the reason I look, I want to make sure he pays attention. I need it. Yeah. He, he's relaxed over there. He's imagining barbecue ribs right now. He's imagining a massage, salon. I don't know where he's at. Good or good? Great. What?
what I say. Anything in America, if it's a profit or income, it's taxable. Thank you. Keep remembering this, Mr. X, Y, Z. Whatever is profit or income, Mr. Prospect, Mr. Klein, Mr. X, Y, Z, whatever is profit or income, is taxable in America. And I keep repeating this. Out of your ten dollars, you'll pay. Out of your forty dollars, you'll pay ten dollars or less in taxes. At the end of the year, it will be less than two thousand thirty. Next year, your four percent will grow not based on thousand dollars, but based on ten thirty. Make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Uncle Sam says, "Well, what if we could just come up with products where we'll let you grow your money and not bother you as much as you want? Okay? We'll let you grow it and won't bother you." Two conditions. These are the products. These are the annuities, 401ks, 403Bs, 457 any IRS, right? All of that. Any guess so far? Is this good? Overwhelming a little? No. Not at all? You guys with me? Yeah. This is a lot to take in. But then we're doing a five year course in 20 minutes. It's gotta be intense, right? The two conditions are we'll let you grow your money until you are 59 and a half years old. If you ever decide to take money out before you're 59 and a half, you're gonna pay taxes on the exact amount you took out as ordinary income tax. So if you took for say 100,000 out and you're on 30% tax bracket, you're gonna pay 30% tax on the 100,000 as ordinary income tax. Fun? See most of the times, people who work for a corporation, their managers tell them when you retire, your 401k, they'll be tax free. That's a lie. That's a very big lie. And the reason they tell them is because that's what they were told. And what they don't know is the corporations don't do these group policies because they terrify their people. They do these big policies because the tax write up on these suckers is so big, it's enough to cover the rent of the building some equipment, maybe even some of the payroll. That's why they do it. Not to mention they put some of their money too. We don't pay taxes, they don't. They smart. You know, I'll have a green card just for you. I can't counsel really from different accountants too, but not the any money accounts in Tehran. The ones that are federally uh, licensed which means they can participate as IRS uh, officer in every state they go to, different kind of license. They say, why would you buy a house and own it? They're dumb. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? <laughs> you can get a house, you open an LLC, sell your house to your LLC. Mm -hmm. Now you have zero liability. You suck out the cash value from the house, the equity. You rent the house, now on a lower interest, lower premium, you rent the house to you, you suck out the premium because you own the LLC, it's tax free. <laughs> and then you put it as a down payment, buy another house, sell that to your LLC, who rent is in there? <laughs> I'm listening, I go, oh, hold on, man. Yeah. I had some hope over here, <laughs> hold on. But you know what? A full head? Needs no cover up. <laughs> you rent from yourself. Anyway, does this make sense? We pay no taxes. Why? Because they understand these things. It's a core. All right? After 59 and a half, we take out the money. You, there won't be any penalty, but you will pay taxes. Good or good? Mr. and Ms. Klein, remember when I said everything that's a profit or income is taxable? Whatever is a benefit is not. Do you have a health insurance? Every time you go to the doctor, you give them that card, they say $10, $20 copay. If you know it, it is never $10 plus tax. If you have a car insurance, you ever get into a car accident, you get a check to fix your health, fix your vehicle. Never put that in your taxes, not because IRS didn't see you getting a call to check, simply because it's a benefit, it's not taxable. Jack will drill down on this during your early classes a little more, but also how to present it, and you guys will role play on how.
about it, because that, that's why it's so important to me. Doing good. Great. Great. Got it. Those products are? Insurances. Why are insurances the safest companies out there also? Yes, sir. The, they, they, uh, the banks are owned by the insurance company. Say it again. It's safe because they they back all the banks, so it's always going to be safe. They back all the banks, so bank ex banks actually care for nothing to happen to them, right? Yeah. Well, that's in a way true, but also because think of it this way: in America, only one out of thousand car insurance owners, I'm sorry, 400 car insurance owners, actually participate their insurance, meaning as they use their car insurance in a year. One out of 400 which means all those premiums provided goes to who? Insurance, insurance companies, which they give and grow. They give it to the investment companies, they invest themselves, which gives it to the bank, which gives it back to them. On and on. Now we're going to talk about this in a second, a little bit more. We're going to get a little deeper. Can I get a little deeper? Yeah. yeah. Right after this, you guys will need a 20 minute break, run around the building, and a shower. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is intense, huh? Okay. One out of 1,000 homeowners, uh, insurance owners, right? Only one out of 1,000 actually use their insurance. So all those premiums given goes to the insurance company. 85% of term insurance owners, get this, don't die on time. <laughs> they forget. <laughs> the alarm didn't work or the beneficiaries, they remind them. Right? You know, this is plan, you got 10 years, 20 years term, go. Right? Wanna provide those services yet? 85% of service units owners don't buy a plan. Two kinds of insurances that exist. Insurance number one is the temporary insurances, and then there is permanent insurance. Temporary insurance are pretty simple. You buy. If you don't die on time, sorry, you died, we'll pay. Make sense? All right, now then it's a little more advanced, that's why more and more people want it. And you can talk about the living benefits, okay? But for our sake of our point, I, I just want to talk on that. Number two is you can have permanent insurances, which give you the option to also grow some cash value, or in your words, you can say savings, you can say set aside money, emergency fund, college funds. The good news about it, you don't have to report to anyone why you want to use it and what for. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes parents buy life insurances as college funds versus 529A. Because in 529A, if you don't use it for college, meaning it's 20, 25 years is a long time, and things can happen in life, whether it's loss of ability to work or income stock, and you gotta put food on the table today and secure the roof versus worry about 20 years later, maybe my kid will decide to go to college. You use that money for anything but college, you pay about almost 40% in taxes and penalties. If it's used for anything but education, guess what? In life insurances, you never report what you use it for, not to mention it's tax free for whatever you use it for. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have seen illustrations for 100, 200, 500 dollars, maybe, right? These products are not designed for that, it works for that. But you put it. So this is why they're using it. The best money laundering product approved <laughs> by the IRS. <laughs> best product. Why? Because you don't even have to touch the actual savings, the cash value amount. You just take the interest and your grandchildren can live off of it. Just the interest, which means the entire amount of money you can even touch. Just the interest. Tax free. That's why a lot of rich people, when they do estate farming, you guys have seen garage sales, right? Have you ever seen estate sales? That's when they fail to do estate planning, and now they have no choice but within 90 days come up with 38 or 50% of their net worth and give it to IRS. 
once they do estate planning, they just take a portion of the life insurance, keep it to them, and they keep everything else that the person left for his family to go to. Trust doesn't protect from estate taxes. That's not enough. Depending where they spent money was. Mr. and Ms. Crimes, your money can grow. In the United States, also in three major economies, U.S., Asia, and Europe, average Joe doesn't have the time to monitor where the stock market stands. What are we gonna do? How does it work? Average Joe works, and they wanna make sure I put 20 bucks here, or 100 bucks here, and I don't wanna worry about it, and I wanna make sure it grows. Mm -hmm. My clients looked at me, and said, I have never heard about this. I mean, here and there, but really, this is the end. You did this stuff, honey. We were gonna put, you know, 70,000 for trade, but can you also send 10,000? We'll start with 50, we'll be okay next year. We don't have to travel a lot, we can just save up this money. <clears throat> Each one contributes 10,000, we'll start. These are traders, 7% of the return, net after a while. So I'm still with the same. I give them some education, I say all of this, it's great stuff, and we have it with variety. You tell me where you see yourself. Be taxable father, tax deferred, the tax exempt, and I'll make sure you spend a little money. Let them design their own product. I have it all with variety. I'm really 22, I can pay the same. But now they know, and people are smart enough to make their own choice. Very good. Very good. A lot? No. Not enough. Not enough. This is what S&P 500 looks like. This is a little outdated. Some companies aren't in there anymore. Some of them are. But this is the best way how, they, how I explain. When you own a stock, you're hoping if you buy from, say, Sears or Microsoft or Starbucks stocks, you're hoping their stock will go up and they'll win so you can win. But what happens when the opposite happens? You lose, right? Mm -hmm. But do you think the 500 together overall has a bigger chance of succeeding every year? As a matter of fact, they have standards. If they don't work up to those standards, they get kicked out so new ones can come in. Does that ensure your growth? Yes. But let's be honest, sometimes the United States economy doesn't do so good, Mr. Klein, right? What if your 50 bucks could also be in Europe's top 50 companies that are working for Euro's economy? What about Asia? How about your money participating in three major economies and you don't even have to be a millionaire person that has no hope for life, and thanks son, you changed my family's life. You tell me my 50 bucks that I can barely put aside can actually be somewhere where it can work for us. Yeah? And the person that has only 50 bucks to put, they appreciate it more. They ask more questions than the one that has $500 to save. It means for the $50 more. And I have a client that we started seven years ago. Oh, my first one, nine years ago, it was $50. He said, Tony, I will never speak to another finance guy again. I said, why? He said, because you cared about me when I had $50. You spent as much effort with me when I had $50 only to put in when nobody else cared. Now that I have 15,000 to spare a month, who's gonna come to you? Because you never saw me. Wells Fargo's entire investment team was after him. Oh Something happened though with him. He owned a big factory, a uh, textile, and he owned a lot of contracts, 32,000 square feet. Sign the bill. There is a date for the bill to be signed, but that six months later, he is likely to be on hold for six months now. And for six months, he has to pay for all his contracts, all his employees. The business is stuck, not working. For a factory, mm -hmm. for 32,000 square feet, for 
five months, he barely got to put the food on the table and keep up with the lifestyle that they had, right? Five months, it's not easy in his position. That's the guy that started with 50 bucks and that's all he had. He's working three jobs. And I spent four hours with him. You know, some people from the office said, man, you paid well with me, Mr. Sanchez. You talk a lot, don't you? You want to take presentations and go to the best I'll get you the next one. Some people love value, and that's a business way too. Oh, I'm not going to judge them. But I started this business because somebody screwed my family. They gave the best product of their company that was the worst need for ours. So our, my parents lost 50000 that they didn't even know that we had. That's why I got into business, because we do the right thing and it saves people's lives. So he called me and said, Jonah, we did something man, seven, eight years ago. I'm coming here. I don't have money. That's all I'm short. I said, do you need to make some appearances? That's the role. He's like, yeah. Are you counting that too? Because it was my bare minimum. I'm like, well, you know, if you have this much, how much would you like? Are you serious? Thank you. Oh my God, thank you so much. Thank you this, thank you that. And SFIO is a great product, but in this case, we will switch later. Another product where it has no cap. Now you guys know folks on that because once you have that kind of clientele, that it works good. But for, for, an, for a job that puts up to $10,000, the FIO is the greatest. Anybody more, we can talk about other products. So this particular product deposits money every five years. But there is no cap. So for five years, you see no growth. And then in five years, you can see whatever you make for 25 years. Benefit at that time, 2017 was a uh, was that up high yeah, of 28, 2794 percent five year growth, 94 percent in his IUL account. Do you think he was happy? Six closing defaults in two days, right after. Right after six closing defaults, as hungry as he is. Do the right thing, people will remember and they stand by you. This was a lot. Uh, I would teach more, but I think this is this is enough. Have some breaks so they shall we can talk about business. Yes.